Poor, sleepy and hungry as he was, Mowgli could not help laughing when the bandalog began, twenty at a time, to tell him how great and wise and strong and gentle they were, and how foolish he was to wish to leave them. We are great, we are free, we are wonderful, we are the most wonderful people in all of the jungle. We all say so and so it must be true, they shouted. Now, as you are a new listener and can carry our words back to the jungle people so that they must may notice us in the future, we will tell you all about our most excellent selves. Mowgli made no objection and the monkeys gathered by hundreds and hundreds on the terrace to listen to their own speakers singing the praises of the bandalog. And whenever a speaker stopped for want of breath, they would all shout together, this is true, we all say so. Mowgli nodded and blinked and said, Yes, when they asked him a question, and his head spun with the noise. Tabaki the jackal must have bitten all these people, he said to himself, and now they have the madness. Certainly, this is a duany, the madness. Do they never go to sleep? Now there is a cloud coming to cover that moon. If it were only a big enough cloud, I might try to run away in the darkness. But I am tired. That same cloud was being watched by two good friends in the ruined ditch below the city wall, for Bagheera and Carr, knowing well how dangerous the monkey people were in large numbers, did not wish to run any risks. The monkeys never fight unless there are a hundred to one, and a few in the jungle care for those odds. I will go to the west wall, Carr whispered, and come down swiftly with the slope of the ground in my favour. They will not throw themselves upon my back in their hundreds, but... I know it, said Bagheera. Would that Baloo were here, but we must do what we can. When that cloud covers the moon, I shall go to the terrace. They will hold some sort of council there over the body. Good hunting, said Carr grimly, and glided away to the west wall. That happened to be the least ruined of any, and the big snake was delayed a while before he could find a way up the stones. The cloud hid the moon, and as Mowgli wondered what could come next, he heard Bagheera's light feet on the terrace. The black panther had raced up the slope almost without a sound, and was striking. He knew better than to waste time in biting right and left among the monkeys, who were seated around Mowgli in circles fifty and sixty deep. There was a howl of fright and rage, and then as Bagheera tripped on rolling, kicking bodies beneath him, a monkey shouted, There is only one here! Kill him! Kill! A scuffling mass of monkeys, biting, scratching, tearing and pulling, closed over Bagheera while five or six laid hold of Mowgli, dragged him up the wall of the summer house and pushed him through the hole of the broken dome. A man-trained boy would have been badly bruised, for the fall was a good fifteen feet. But Mowgli fell as Baloo had taught him to fall and landed on his feet. Stay here, shouted the monkeys, till we have killed thy friends and later we will play with thee if the poison people leave thee alive. We'd, we'd be off one blood, he and I, said Mowgli, quickly giving the snake's call. He could hear rustling and hissing in the rubbish all around him and gave the call a second time to make sure. Even so, down Hood's Hall, said a half a dozen low voices, every ruin in India becomes sooner or later a dwelling place of snakes, and the old summer house was alive with cobras. Stand still, little, bro little brother, for thy feet may do us harm. Mowgli stood as quietly as he could, peering through the open work, and listening to the furious din on the fight round the Black Panther, the yells and chatterings and scufflings, and Bagheera's deep hoarse cough as he backed and buckled and twisted and plunged under the heaps of his enemies. For the first time since he was born, Bagheera was fighting for his life. Baloo must be at hand. Bagheera would not have come alone, Mowgli thought. And then he called aloud, To the tank, Bagheera! Roll to the water tank! Roll and plunge! Get to the water! 
The Gira heard and the cry that told him Mowgli was safe gave him new courage. He worked his way desperately, inch by inch, straight for the reservoirs, hitting in silence. Then, from the ruined wall nearest the jungle rose up the rumbling war shout of Baloo. The old bear had done his best, but he could not come before. Bagheera, he shouted. I am here. I climb. I haste. Ahura. The stones slip under my feet. Wait my coming, O oh, my most famous bandalog. He panted up the terrace, only to disappear to the head in a wave of monkeys, but he threw himself squarely on his haunches and, spreading out his four paws, hugged as many as he could hold and then began to hit with a regular bat, 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 like the flipping strokes of a paddle wheel. A crash and a splash told Mowgli that Bagheera had fought his way to the tank where the monkeys could not follow. The panther lay gasping for breath his head just out of water, while the monkey stood there deep on the red steps, dancing up and down with rage, ready to spring upon him from all sides if he came out to help Baloo. It was then that Bagheera lifted up his dripping chin and in despair gave the snake's call for protection. We be of blood, ye and I, for he believed that Ka had turned tail at the last minute. Even Baloo, half smothered under the monkeys on the edge of the terrace, could not help chuckling as he heard the Black Panther asking for help. Ka had only just worked his way over the west wall, landing with a wrench that dislodged a coping stone in the ditch. He had no intention of losing any advantage of the ground and coiled and uncoiled himself once or twice to be sure that every foot of his long body was in working order. All that while, the fight with Baloo went on and the monkeys yelled in the tank around Bagheera and Mang the Bat, flying to and fro, carried the news of the great battle over the jungle till even Hathi, the wild elephant, trumpeted and far away scattered bands of the monkey folk woke and came leaping along the tree roads to help their comrades in the cold lairs. And the noise of the fight roused all the day birds for miles around. Then Carr came straight, quickly and anxious to kill. The fighting strength of a python is in the driving blow of his head, backed by all the strength and weight of his body. If you can imagine a lance or a battering ram or a hammer weighing nearly half a ton, driven by a cool, quiet mind living in the handle of it, you can roughly imagine that Carr was like when he fought. A python four or five feet long can knock a man down if he hits him fairly in the chest, and Carr was 30 feet long, as you know. His first stroke was delivered into the heart of the crowd round Baloo, was sent home with shut mouth in silence, and there was no need of a second. The monkey scattered with cries of, Car! It's Car! Run! Run! Generations of monkeys had been scared into good behaviour by the stories their elders told them of Car, the night thief who could slip along the branches as quietly as moss grows and steal away the strongest monkeys that ever lived. Of old Car, who could make himself look so like a dead branch, of a rotten stamp that the wisest were deceived, till the branch caught them. Car was everything that the monkeys feared in the jungle, for none of them knew the limits of his power. None of them could look him in the face, and none had ever come alive out of his hug. And so they ran, stammering with terror, to the walls and the roofs of the houses, and Baloo drew a deep breath of relief. His fur was much thicker than Bagheera's, but he had suffered sorely in the fight. Then Carr opened his mouth for the first time and spoke one long hissing word. And the faraway monkeys, hurrying to the defence of the cold lairs, stayed where they were, cowering till the loaded branches bent and crackled under them. The monkeys on the walls and the empty houses stopped their cries and in stillness that fell upon the city, Mowgli heard Bagheera shaking his wet sides as he came up from the tank. Then the clamour broke out again. The monkeys leaped higher up the walls. They clung around the necks of the big stone idols and shrieked as they skipped along the battlements, while Mowgli, dancing in the summer house, put his eyes to the, to the screen work and hooted old-fashioned between his front teeth to show his derision and contempt. Get the man-cub out of that trap! I can do no more! Bigira gasped. Let us take the man-cub and go. They may attack again. They will not move till I order them. Stay, you so, Car hissed, and the city was silent once more. I could not come before, brother, but I think I heard thee call. This was to Bagheera. 
I, I may have cried out in the battle, Bagheera answered. Balu, art thou hurt? I am not that they have not pulled me into a hundred little bearlings, said Balu gravely, shaking one leg after the other. Well, I am Stalker, we owe thee, I think our lives, Bagheera and I. No matter, where is the manling? Here, in a trap, I cannot climb out, cried Mowgli. The curve of the broken dome was above his head. Take him away, he dances like Mayo the peacock, he will crush our youngs, said the cobras inside. Ha! said Carl with a chuckle. He has friends everywhere, this manning. Stand back, manning, and hide you, oh poison people. I break down the wall. Carl looked carefully till he found a discoloured crack in the marble tracery, showing a weak spot, made two or three light taps with his head to get the distance, and then, lifting up six feet of his body, clear off the ground, sent home half a dozen full power smashing blows nose first. The screen work broke and fell away in a cloud of dust and rubbish and Mowgli leaped through the opening and flung himself between Balu and Bagheera an arm around each big neck. Art thou hurt? said Balu, hugging him softly. I am sore, hungry and just a little bruised, but oh, they have handled ye grievously, my brothers. Ye bleed? Others also, said Bagheera, licking his lips and looking at the monkey dead on the terrace and around the tank. It is nothing, it is nothing if thou art safe, oh my pride of little frogs, whimpered Barley. Oh, that we shall judge later, said Bagheera in a dry voice that Mowgli did not at all like. But here is Ka to whom we owe the battle and thou owest thy life. Thank him according to our customs, Mowgli. Mowgli turned and saw the great python's head swaying a foot above his own. So, this is the manling, said Ka. Very soft is his skin, and he is not unlike the bandalog. Have a care, manling, that I do not mistake thee for a monkey. Some twilight when I have newly changed my coat. We be of one blood, thou and I. Mowgli answered. I take my life from thee tonight. My kill shall be thy kill if thou art hungry, O Ka. Oh, thanks, little brother, said Ka. Thou his eyes tri twinkled. And what may so bold a hunter kill? I ask that I may follow when next he goes abroad. I kill nothing, I am too little, but I drive goats towards such as can use them. When thou art empty, come to me and see if I shall speak the truth. I have some skill in these. He held out his hand. And if ever thou art in a trap, I may pay, pay the debt which I owe to thee, to Bagheera and to Blue here. Good hunting to ye all, my masters. Well said, growled Balu, for Mowgli had returned thanks very prettily. The python dropped his head lightly for a minute on Mowgli's shoulder. A great heart and a courteous tongue, said he, they shall bow thee far through the jungle mounding, but now go hence quickly with thy friends. Go and sleep for the moon sets and what follows is not well that thou shouldest see. The moon was sinking behind the hills and the lines of trembling monkeys huddled together on the walls and battlements looked like ragged, shaky fringes of things. Bali went down to the tank for a drink, and Bagheera began to put his fur in order, and Carr glided out into the centre of the terrace and brought his jaws together with a ringing snap that drew all the monkeys' eyes upon him. The moon sets, he said. Is there yet light upon to see? From the walls came a moan, like the wind in the treetops. We see, O oh Carr. Good. Begins now the dance, the dance of the hunger of Carr. Sit still and watch. He turned twice or thrice in a big circle, weaving his head from right to left. Then he began making loops and figures of eight with his body and soft oozy triangles that melted into squares and five-sided figures and coiled mounds never resting, never hurrying and never stopping his low humming song. It grew darker and darker at last, till at last the dragging shifting coils disappeared, but they could hear the rustle of the scales. 
Baloo and Bagheera stood still with stone, growling in their throats, their neck hair bristling, and Mowgli watched and wondered. Band and war, said the voice of Kara at last. Can you foot off hand with can ye stir foot or hand without my order? Speak. Without thy order, we cannot stir foot or hand, O car. Good. Come all one pace closer to me. The lions of the monkey swayed forward helplessly, and Baloo and Bagheera took one stiff step forward with them. Closer, hissed Car, and they all moved again. Mowgli laid his hands on Baloo and Bagheera to get them away, and the two great beasts started as they thought as though they had been waked from a dream. Keep thy hand on my shoulder, Bagheera whispered. Keep it there, or I must go back, must go back to Car. Ah. It is only old Car making circles on the dust, said Mowgli. Let us go, and the three slipped off through a gap in the walls to the jungle. Woof, said Barley when he stood up under the still trees again. Never more will I make an alley off Car, and he shook himself all over. He knows more than we, said Bagheera, trembling. In a little time, had I stayed, I should have walked down his throat. Many will walk by that road before the moon rises again, said Baloo. He will have good hunting after his own fashion. But what was the meaning of it all, said Mowgli, who did not know anything of a python's powers of fascination. I say no more than a big snake making foolish circles down the dark came, and his nose was all sore. Ho, ho. Mowgli, said Bagheera angrily. His nose was sore on thy account, as my ears and sides and paws and Baloo's neck and shoulders are bitten on thy account. Neither Baloo nor Bagheera will be able to hunt with pleasure for many days. It's nothing, said Baloo. We have the man cub again. True, but he has lost us heavily in time, which must have been spent in good hunting, in wounds, in hair. I am half plucked along my back and last of all in honour, for remember Mowgli, I, who am the Black Panther, was forced to call upon Car for protection, and Baloo and I were both made stupid as little birds by the hunger dance. All this man cub, man cub came of thy playing with the bandalog. True, it is true, said Mowgli sorrowfully. I am an evil man cub, and my stomach is sad in me. <laughs> What says the law of the jungle, Baloo? Baloo did not wish to bring Mowgli into any more trouble, for he could not tamper with the law, so he mumbled, Sorry never stays punishment, but remember, Bagheera, he is very little. I will remember, but he has done mischief, and blows must be dealt now. Mowgli, hast thou anything to say? Nothing, I did wrong, Baloo, and thou art wounded. It is just... Bagheera gave him half a dozen loathe taps. From a panther's point of view, they would hardly have waked one of his own cubs. But for a seven-year-old boy, they amounted to as severe a beating as you could wish to avoid. When it was all over, Mowgli sneezed and picked him himself up without a word. Now, said Bagheera, jump on my back, little brother, and we will go home. One of the beauties of jungle law is that punishment settles all scores. There is no nagging afterwards. Mowgli laid his head down on Bagheera's back and slept so deeply that he never waked when he was put down by the mother's wolf side in the home cave. The Road Song of the Bandalore Log Here we go in a flung festoon, halfway up the jealous moon. Don't you ever are... Uh, Pranceful bands, don't you wish you had extra hands? Wouldn't you like if your tails were so curved in the shape of a cupid's bow? Now you're angry, but never mind. Brother, thy tails hangs down behind. Here we sit in a branchy row, thinking of beautiful things we know, dreaming of deeds we mean to do, all complete in a minute or two. Something noble and grand and good, won by merely wishing we could. Now we're going to, never mind, brother thy tail hangs down behind. All the talk we ever have heard, uttered by bat or beast or bird, hide or fin or scale or feather, jabber it quickly and all together. X 
excellent, wonderful, once again, now we are talking just like men. Let's pretend we are, never mind, brother thy tail hangs down behind. This is the way of the monkey kind. Then joining our leaping lines that scumfish through the pines, that's rocket by where light and high the wild grape swings. By the rubbish in our wake and the noble noise we make, be sure, be sure, we're going to do some splendid things.